One of my number one requests has been a Highland cow, so here we go. Everybody seems to do blue backgrounds for these, so I'm gonna do more of a peachy version using pink, yellow, and a little bit of white, doing back and forth strokes on my 11 by 14 canvas board. I have this one turned horizontally today because his head is very wide with the horns. And I'm just piecing in those colors a little bit with my mop brush all the way across. And then make sure it's dry really good because we're gonna do the underpainting with a size eight round brush and black paint. Slightly off to the right, I am going to do a very wide U. That is gonna be the horns and then make it thicker accordingly. See how the horns are pointed up, almost like right angles, but it has a curved inside edge. And in the middle of that shape, I'm going to do an upside down long U that's flattened at the top. And then meeting underneath that, I'm going to do another wide U. So you have almost a curved rectangle that goes all the way around. And underneath that, I am going to do a longer U that is curved at the bottom for his chin. Now, do you see those two lines going through the head? I'm going to connect those with a sideways U for his ear on the left side and do the same thing to the right side, starting slightly under the horn area and at the top of that middle line there. Why does it look like an evil monkey right now? I don't know. But take all those shapes then uh, with the same brush and fill it in with just black. This is just to give you a base layer. It almost acts like a shadow. So fill that all in. Now we don't want just a floating head, so I'm going to do two lines coming out from his body, one coming off from the bottom side of his ear and then right side of his chin. I do like this color background and I don't wanna lose all that color. You can fill in his body all the way to the corner, but I'm going to fill in mostly towards the head and do expression strokes going out towards the corner. That way the color is still there and frames your eye towards the center where all the detail is going to be. Now with the detail brush, let's get placement for his eyes. Where the ear meets the head, I'm going to do a straight line up above where the ear starts. Not quite in the middle, slightly below where the middle of the ear is. Do a straight line there with just some tan paint and do two little lines coming out to a point. And then I'm going to do some shading underneath his eye. We want his cheekbones to have color. There's not gonna be as much texture under here. It's just gonna be very, very short hair. So more of this needs to be fill in. I'm just gonna take some tan and nutmeg and almost contour it. Like I'm giving him uh, makeup underneath his eyes and down along his cheekbone. It's up to you how much you do, but I want these parts to be showing just a little bit in the end. And while we're here, let's get placement for his snout. So I'm doing a rounded rectangle at the bottom and filling that in. It's above the bottom of his chin, but not in the middle of his face. It's down further. Fill that in, and then I'm gonna take some tan and just highlight the edges, even round and bring out the bottom points. And along the bottom, round that a little bit more there. That's a snout shape. Okay, let that dry. We're gonna take the round brush again and let's do some color on his horns, taking some tan paint for shading, do the bottom of his horn and then use some white at the top for highlight. While it's still wet, you can go back in and blend in the middle. Gives it more of a bone color. Definitely want more brighter white towards the top of it. And then I'm gonna take some black paint and point each of the horns too. So pointing it and then blending it towards the bottom as well. So you can go back in with some tan and blend that too. Make sure it's coming into the head a little bit. And then we're gonna start the hair texture. This is gonna take you the longest out of everything. We're taking the round brush with some nutmeg brown and I'm just doing short little lines. See, they're little short downward strokes, but we want his the bridge of his nose to look rounded. So in the middle of his face, the little hairs are gonna be going kind of straight down, but then on either side of his head, they're gonna curve out that direction. So the left ones are curving out slightly to the left and the ones on the right side of his face are curving out to the right. Even bring it down down below, um, kind of overlapping over top of those colored cheek areas. Ooh, it's already starting to look furry, I love it. Um, order of operations for the ears too, you want to do curved out lines. See how it's starting slightly in towards the center, but not in the center, you wanna keep that black and I'm curving them out and around the edge of the ear, all the way across the bottom. And do the same thing starting at the top of the ear and curving that out and down. You wanna leave a little bit of black in the center so that looks like the center of his ear. 
Same thing on the other side, but they're gonna curve out to the right, do the bottom edge first, and then coming down from the top like that. Again, this is just the first layer of color. Now, once you have all of those, then we get to start the fun emo bangs that these cows are most known for. Make sure you're curving up a little bit of a part, see how it goes up and around the top of his head, and just shape them. These are gonna be longer, um, they can go down below the eye. I don't want my cow to be blind like most of them you see, but it's okay if some of your hair goes in front of them. See this bang on the right, I'm going to curve down and around his bridge of his nose, but going in between his cheek like that. Make sure you bring it up and around that edge of the horn too. This first layer really is just to get the start of your shape. So you don't have to commit to whatever you do. You can always change it a little bit later. And don't forget his body. Make sure the lines are a little curved so you give the illusion of a rounded area. And make sure you leave a gap between his head and his body a little bit. See, I'm not going all the way up to his chin or head area, but just expressive strokes all throughout that black. I'm starting to see it. Now, like I said, this is just the first layer. I'm going to go in now and do the same order I did with some dark brown or burnt umber and same brush. Do the bridge of his nose, do the ears, and really, you're just starting to shape it a little bit more. You're starting to fill in more of that negative space where the black was. You don't have to cover the black completely. And you can just keep playing with all of these different shapes. See, I think that already is starting to look like a Highland cow. It's up to you how many different colors and layers you do. I'm going to push this one to the limit today. You decide where you want to stop with his hair. See, I have those two dark colors, but Highland cows actually have an orange tint to them a little bit. So I'm taking some orange and tan and adding some a highlight layer in between all those other colors. Now, like I did with the rooster, I like to go in with highlight and usually that gets a little bit bright. So then I go back in and layer a little bit of the darker colors over top of that. Light, dark, light, dark. And when you do a brighter color like this, it's also giving you an opportunity to shape even more and define each of these hair areas. You can't really see them as well with the two dark colors, but you can really see it when you start to add brighter colors. Now, another tip is I would actually prime your canvas for this one. I did not prime this one and you can really see the texture of the canvas. I kind of think that makes him look even fluffier. See on these bangs with the uh, bright color bringing that out, you see the color, the texture of that canvas. That's okay, but if you struggle carrying the paint for longer strokes like this, instead of fighting the texture of the canvas, just use a little bit of gesso and prep your canvas. That's going to basically prime it and fill in all of that texture so that you're painting on a smooth surface. Now, let the hair dry. We're gonna do a little smile in his snout. That looks really funny. Taking your detail brush, curve that smile up then <laughs> and bring it around. That's actually his nose, not his mouth, don't worry. But I did that in black first and then using the round brush, I'm going to fill it in with a nose color. So I'm just taking a little bit of pink and white. Fill that in while it's still wet. You'll get a little bit of shading. Um, that's just your base color. Then take your detail brush. They have two little black side nostrils. So put that in there. That's not really what they look like, but get a little chunk of black in there and then you can go back in with your round brush and shape it a little bit. On the nose, it's a little bit squared. So I'm gonna square the top edges of his nose there and add a little bit more of a peachy color. Uh, make sure you do shading at the bottom with some black. See, I'm just going back and forth, making sure it's blended a little bit. And it'd be brighter towards the top. See, I went back in with some white and blended that in towards the top of his nose. Let's do some more color for around his nose. I'm gonna layer over top of that some nutmeg, highlight a little bit more around the edges of it. You can see that a little bit more. 
and his chin is invisible right now so let's add that in using some dark uh, brown that burnt umber I'm just going to outline that a little bit curve it for his chin it'll go all the way around his snout take some black and blend where the snout area meets the chin so you get the illusion that it's coming out at you the more highlights and shading that you do the more three-dimensional it'll look so see I even highlighted a little bit around there the more contrast you have too is really gonna make it pop out like that and I'm even gonna take my detail brush and take some white paint outline the top of the nose like that. Okay, we're almost there. Then I'm going to take my detail brush and fix up any fine areas of hair that I went over. So I'm bringing a little bit of fine hair down into that nose area. I'm going to fix up the eye shape a little bit, make it darker in the middle, outline it with some brown. I'm even going to do a little bit more of a grayish tone. I add a little bit of white and black in with my tan around the eye there. You can even blend in a tiny bit of white in that black so it's not so, so dark in his eye. And don't forget the shines in his eye. One or two dots of white is going to make him look like he's looking at you. I think he needs more color in his cheeks, so I'm even going back in and adding a little bit more of a tint there. Ooh, rosy cheeks. So cute. We are almost there. At this point, it's up to you how much fine detail you wanna do. I go back in with my detail brush and fix up the edges of all the areas. And like I said, I'm going to push this one to the limit. So I'm going to take some tan and white even and do a brighter, fine coat of hair over top of this. So right now you have the chunky hair look that you did with the round brush, that's okay. But I'm going to do some finer hairs with highlights. You're really gonna be able to see it. I do the brighter color and then I start layering some of that darker color over top. And once you get the hair the way you want it, don't forget to go back in and add a little definition. I'm taking black underneath the chin and where his head meets the body. Um, extra highlights on the snout and the chin also help. If you like regular Highland cows, stop there. Pause the video, don't go any further. But I am going to push this even farther with bright colors. I have seen multi-colored versions of this cow that look like something out of a Lisa Frank notebook. I am going to do that. And I'm gonna do that with some slow dry blending medium. That's just a clear medium that you mix in with the acrylic paint to help it go smooth. It's great for blending and carrying the paint. Also makes it a little bit more transparent. So I'm just gonna do a layer of color with that and very carefully using my detail brush, just piece it in just like we did with the different shades of brown. I'm going to do that to all the different shades of color. Technically, you did not have to do all the different shades of brown if you wanted to do a multicolored cow. You could just do the same steps I did with the brown version and just do it with color using darker colors for shading and lighter colors like oranges and yellows for highlighting. Always save those colors for last. Yellow, I am going to add in. There's your multicolored. I'm even gonna take white at the very end, not near as much as all the other colors, but just some bright expression strokes in different areas to make him pop out. Look how he pops out from the page. I love that. That's the second version of the cow. I'm gonna push it even a step further and show you a third option. It's where I've seen it multicolored, but it's just peeking out from the brown. So after you do all the color, I am layering some browns over top of it to make it look a tiny bit more natural, kind of in between. There's some darker brown and more highlights up towards the top of him. I'm even changing the direction of his bangs a little bit. Let's give him some more color on his cheeks. Okay, this poor cow has been through so many different transitions today. We are going to stop there. You need to know when to stop sometimes. I will be the first to admit that I don't know when to stop. I let curiosity get the best of me, but that's why practice is so important. Like the other day I practiced and I did a bright pink background. If you do the multicolored version, you could do any colors you want, but I went with more of a peachy tone because that goes more with the orange tones in his fur. Have fun with it, make it your own. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, follow me for more on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Happy painting.